Good morning from the pavilion at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Upper Co. One of these days, if things, the things don't get worse, we're going inside for worship. And, and I am interested in, in everybody and how they're going to respond to that. So let me know. This morning, I'm going to ask you to think about community as a disappointed Paul writes to the Philippians of his concern for discord in their midst. He will write, let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Make my joy complete. This morning, once again, we will have communion. Um, it, we're getting used to that. The, the one thing that we ask is that you is that you not take your mask off and, and consume the communion elements right here, but take them back to your take them back to your seat. And at the end of communion, I will pull my mask down and consume them. And at that point, ask you to ask you to participate as well. Um, the other thing is that there are, this whole business of standing during worship. Um, the one time I think we're going to get you to stand this morning is for the gospel reading. That'll be real obvious when we get to that. Um, other than that, pretty much everything is, is the way we've been doing it. Intercessory prayer, again, is a part of our worship service. I urge you to spend the time early, right, like right now, in preparation for considering special concerns and people to present when the time comes when we pray together. I specifically ask you to, to pray for the victims and those struggling with the realities of COVID-19, those whose lives have been torn asunder by fires in the West and storms in the South, and those of us whose lives continue to be altered by climate change. Remember that we maintain a list of concerns that you may contribute to. Email them to the office email address at St. Paul's, at office at St. Paul's Upper Co. org. By the way, folks, to those of you who are sitting here, those red trees out there that, that, that are slowly dying one at a time are sugar makers. And their sickness is a response to the global climate change. Um, sugar maples really belong in New Hampshire and Vermont and Maine. This is just a little far south for them anyhow, and climate is doing them in. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you. Forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. First of all, a, a note that the middle part of the reading from Philippians this morning is a famous passage that every seminarian knows about, and I'm not going to preach on it this morning. There was a mother who had two daughters. It was fall and the leaves were falling, falling in their backyard. The mother decided it was a good day to rake the yard, so she asked her oldest daughter to do it. Forget it, Mom, the daughter said. I got plans. I want to go and play down the street. You can find someone else. But as she was walking to her friend's house, she realized that she had not been very nice and that her mother needed help. So she changed her mind and decided she should help her mother after all. And she went back to start raping. Have you ever been that daughter? That mother? Well, Leo Tolstoy writes, Christianity with its doctrine of humility, of forgiveness, of love, is incompatible with the state, with its haughtiness, its violence, its punishment, its wars. You know Paul, the letter writer. Almost all of the time he is writing to early Christians that he knew well. To a Christian that he has been proud of. He is writing the letter that we read this morning as a letter to the early Christians in what had been the kingdom of Macedonia and the city of Philippi. In prison, where Paul is, there isn't much that he can do but to encourage their faith. But there is something particularly wrong with his friends in Philippi. He has heard of divisions growing in their midst. We know absolutely nothing about the specifics of the problem. But there is a clash between Yoda and the Syntyche in the fourth chapter where Paul's concern becomes pointed and he calls them out by name. He knows about divisions and wants the family of God's people to look to Jesus, not as a model, but as a promise for what they can be. Paul's statement of unity in verse 3, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves is a fix or a call for a fix to the problem. Not as a call for uniformity, mind you, but as a, for a way of making space in our lives for others, as opening ourselves to otherness. It's about being hospitable. It's about expanding our view of the possible to include others. Others' needs, others' point of view, others' space in our personal universe. The Christian family is like any human community and has had its problems over and over again with fractions and divisions, each with its own insistence on right or correctness. Everyone here knows the problem of discord and jealousy and the insistence on settling it with correctness. The person who insists 
I have been doing it this way for 30 years, and nobody is going to tell me how to do it. Runs head on into the, yeah, but we should do it this way, the right way. And everyone can remember a pastor who absolutely had to change a generation-long structure of the worship service. I have been that pastor. The most troublesome version of this is, this is the way it is syndrome. And if you don't like it, go someplace else. When that happens, step back and look from another point of view. Have empathy for another. Paul, writing is not always easy to listen to, but listen again to these words. If you can, you can almost hear the tears of anguish in Paul's words. I have if there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation of love, any sharing of the Spirit, any compassion, any sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being full of accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition and conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. And it is there that Paul inserts that poem that I talk about, all seminarians knowing everything about, where it says that Christ humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Paul points to Jesus and said, that's what Jesus did. He humbled himself. What else can you do? Paul simply wants us to pay attention to one another, to make room for each other, to understand the needs of everyone, and to commit to listening carefully to each other. And if this turns out to be too hard, then listen again to Paul who points to Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, humbled himself and became obedient to the cross, to the point of death, even death on the cross. Paul is writing to the Philippians, but even more than that, he is begging you, begging you in his words, make my joy complete. It is so simple to consider each other, to make space for the hopes and needs of another, to make room in our hopes for the hopes of another, that runs hard up against our humanity. But it is the core of what Jesus does for each of us, makes it possible for each of us, begging, begs each of us to do in our own lives. All of that, again, in Paul's words. If there is any encouragement, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Make my joy complete for doing what Jesus would do for what doing what Jesus would insist you should do, what Jesus makes it possible in your life to do, to share, to make room for, to open your lives to the needs of one another. 
and in that way make Paul happy and make Jesus smile from his throne. May God go with you today and always. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. In all the world, give your church unity. Inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ. Where the church is powerful and where it struggles, shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Son took on all of bodily life in our world, even to death. Preserve and keep your creation, O God. Mend and redeem places that are polluted and damaged so that all of creation confesses you as Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn the nations towards life. Where our ways are unfair, give us new hearts and new spirits. Where sin permeates our cultures and institutions, change our minds and teach us to trust your authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our lives are yours, O God. Relieve the suffering of those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit, especially those whose names we speak aloud in our hearts and those whose names fill the list of ongoing prayer concerns for this community of faith. Defend the lives and welfare of children who are abused or neglected hungry or exploited, bullied or lonely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn this congregation towards the interest of others. Fill us with your compassion and sympathy. Bless ministries of care in our community. Make us into signs of your mercy and justice for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for those who have gone into the kingdom ahead of us. By their witness, teach us to confess Jesus Christ as Lord in life and in death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Holy food for the holy people. Thanks be to God. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And now may the holy and precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, for the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you, in love toward one another, in patience in time of trial, and in the blessed hope of everlasting life. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God's word. Thank you.